Where can they find Yugi? You can find me on my website, yugitastorman.com. You can find me on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Yugi. You get the snowman on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. You can find me at Yuki the Snowman 314. And you can hear up my cash up. My cash up is Dollar Sign Benjamin A. Snow. You wanna find me? I'm on YouTube at Dark Dreams Bright Ideas. I'm on Twitter at Super Lost Fan 108. I'm on Instagram at the TV Guru 108. You can find my cash up down in the description below. And it's a trick of racists and people who want to exterminate us to estrange us from knowledge, from thinking. Slavery, in slavery, you had compulsory ignorance laws. Compulsory ignorance laws were laws that you could punish someone literally almost to death for learning how to read if they were black and whites could be fun, fined and put in a lot of jeopardy for teaching blacks to read. And that was the law. And when chattel slavery outright was outlawed, the system which happens in, in societies is that what is law can become custom, okay? It was law and slavery that blacks couldn't own real property. When slavery ended, it's still a custom that blacks aren't supposed to have anything. Ergo, racial profiling if you have a nice car or live in an exclusive neighborhood or try to shop in a high-end store. And the same thing, it used to be expected for black people to be stupid. That was the law. And then you make it the custom. And unfortunately, right now, they have uh, doubled down and gotten black people to buy into the custom of us being stupid because uh, stupidity is a, a form of slavery. In fact, the most dangerous form of slavery, in particular when you don't know who you are. So our people live under a type of slavery via custom, and that is uh, something that we have to wake up to. For example, it used to be that you didn't recognize the marriages of or, or bonds between a black man and a black woman that would chattel property. Now it's become the custom that a woman doesn't need a man or a man has too much semen for one woman and not enough income for one woman either. <laughs> but anyway, that's another conversation. So a lot of what we are facing in our society now, if it's not the law, it is the custom that came from the superstructure of the law and people's expectations. Imagine that that's what we're dealing with. And that's where we have a very, a very stupid culture in the music. They, in fact, initially, they didn't want black people loving or liking each other. So they made policies like COINTEL COUNTERPRO for us not to get along. And that was a policy. And then uh, they came up through the culture with this hate culture amongst men, women, generations with the uh, the uh, weaponized hip hop, the weaponized pork chop feminism, the weaponized simpism. Um, do you follow what I'm saying? And that is Dr. Randy Short, author of Slavery Mastery, also author of Spartacus, the real Cory Booker. He's also in Buck Breaking. He's also in American Maroon. He also is executive producer of Dread Scott Nation and the executive producer of The Facade and American Dream. Some people are obsessed with being seen. I I'm, I don't mind being seen, but I, I enjoy. That's why I wanted Dr. Wonders to come on. I like showcasing other people. Uh, growing up, desegregating school, being the only black person, people spitting on you, and nobody will acknowledge that you got spat on because you're the only black in the situation. I've always wanted company because <laughs> it's rough and it's rugged uh, being alone. And uh, so I'm against being a ball hog, as I was saying to Dr. Winters earlier. I, I want to be part of a, a liberational and prosperity team. I, I'm I'm only as great as my people. If my people in the gutter, I am too. You know that's not the mindset of successful blacks. A lot of successful blacks, if my people in the gutter, that's their problem. Well, you said Dr. Winters. Let's go ahead and introduce Dr. Clyde Winters. Um, yeah. He is an educator, anthropologist, linguistic. He has taught education and ling linguistics at the St. Xavier University, Chicago. Dr. Winters is the author of numerous articles on anthropology. I can't even say this word. Aerogenetics? 
<laughs> Archeo- archaeogenetics. Archaeogenetics. I don't even know what that is. I, I want to know what that is. Linguistics. His articles have appeared in journals, Journal of Black Studies, preceding the National Academy of Science, Science Bio Essay, Current Science, International Journal of Human Genetics, International Journal of Travion Linguistics, and Journal of Modern African Studies. Dr. Winner's books include African Empires in Ancient America. We are not just Africans, but the Black Native Americans, Atlantis in Mexico, the Monday Discovery of America, Ancient Scripts in South America, the Sumerians in South America, an archaeological decipherment of ancient writing systems. Dr. Winters has deciphered the Meroitic, Olmec, and Danubian writing systems. The World History of the Black Race by Clyde Winters. Blacks in Europe, from Prehistory to Contemporary Times by Clyde Winters. Manufactured Genetic Origins, The Fake Eurasian Back Migration by Clyde Winters. African Origin World Writing Systems by Clyde Winters. The Merotic Chamber of Philae by Clyde Winters. The Ancient Blacks of China by Clyde Winters. The Kushites Who, What, When, Where by Clyde Winters. An Unofficial History of Dravidian Writing by Clyde Winters. Olmec Language and Literature by Clyde Winters. Brain-Based Learning and Special Education by Clyde Winters. The Philogeography of Afro-Americans and Africans by Clyde Winters. Archaeological Decipherment of Ancient Writing Systems by Clyde Winters. The Dravidian Connections, the Extra-Indian Linguistic Connections of the Dravidian Languages by Clyde Winters. Ancient Scripts in South America, the Sumerians in South America by Clyde Winters. We Are Not Just Africans, The Black Native Americans by Clyde Winters. History of Blacks in America from Prehistory to 1877, A Common Core State Standards History by Clyde Winters. Dravidian, Tamil, is the language of the Indus Valley Writing, a study of the most ancient Tamil language by Clyde Winters. Ancient African History Primer by Clyde Winters. Ancient History of Tamils in Central Asia by Clyde Winters. Using Common Core Standards to Teach Kushite History by Clyde Winters. A Short World History of Black People in Ancient Times by Clyde Winters. Common Core State Standards and Social Science by Clyde Winters. Ooh, that's a lot of books. (laughs) Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, you know, because uh, the the thing is this, is that what I found is, is that that I want want Black people to understand. I, I wrote contemporary stuff. I got... I got hundreds of articles, all that good stuff. But see, what I found is this: is that, you know, I, I found that that foundational Black Americans, we need we need to know more about our history, like Dr. Short said, because it's in knowing your history that allows you to become a winner. You know, my saying is knowing yes. is winning. Why is knowing is knowing is winning? Knowing is winning because it allows you it allows you to situate yourself in history, and you can see what you can become. What they've done to our children, what they've done to Black people is that they've taken away our identity. And the way they took away our identity is that they took away our identity because of the fact is that we had no control over, over anything. You know, I mean, Nilly Fuller talks about the fact that we're prisoners of war and we are prisoners of war. My, uh, my ancestry and, uh, and Dr. Short too, my ancestry is, 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 Afro, is Afro, Afro-Indo in the sense that uh, on my mother's side, we had Choctaw, my father's side, it was, uh, you know, sub-Saharan African, but they were described as model, mulatto in the census. But anyway, what, what I found is, is that, you know, for Black people to really be all that we can be, we have to know who we are. And the only way we can know who we are is to be able, in a sense, to get to become involved in those, those activities that allow us to be true, you see. But what I found is, is that you were talking about archaeogenetics. What I did is, is that, Back in the day when I first started researching black people, I used to get on the internet and I'd be debating a lot of a uh, lot of uh, you know uh, Europeans, white people, and a lot of times in a sense they would use genetics because they thought that genetics could could describe who black people were. Because see, what happened mm-hmm. is, is that mm-hmm. if you if you if you study any archaeological papers, you would find that that just about all the ancient skeletons are black people, and they thought that by having genetics, by having genetics in a sense. They could use the population genetics to, to claim that there were no such thing as black people. What they did is they made up a myth. Let me explain to you. 
you see, man originated in Africa, and all all the the so-called genome or haplogroups that people that represent various people, they in a sense developed in Africa. What the European did is that he said that he started making a claim that that there were unique genes carried by Eurasians, you know, mm -hmm. East Eurasians and and Western Eurasians, made them a separate population. And so what they did is is that instead of instead of using the words Caucasian for white, they just said Western European. Instead of saying, you know, Mongoloid for Asians, they just said East Asians. And then mm -hmm. instead of in a sense saying Negro for Negro for black people, they said African. So what they did is they mm -hmm. tried to describe uh -huh. people from a continental, a continental basis and, instead of a uh, continental populations. But see, archaeogenetics, what I did is that I used archaeology and genetics to prove, in a sense, the, the ancient ancestry of many of the people that 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 formerly created civilization around the world. But much of my research, a lot of my research today is being used in the uh, used in the inter-American court. In the inter-American court, there's there's some uh, there's a lot of black people trying to get trying to get uh, reparations and get representation. See, in the international court, they're trying to prove in the uh, in the court of the Americas that black people were the original the original inhabitants of mm -hmm. the uh, of North America. And so what they've done is that I've written about I've published about seven papers on genetics, archaeogenetics. Archaeogenetics simply mean archaeo archaeology. Genetics would be genome or genetics. So it's, okay. it's, it's using archaeology to to support uh, support genetic information. So what they're doing is that they're using my articles to show how many uh, many black people, you know, have have an ancestry. You know that our that our ancestry goes back. This is probably probably what we did in terms of uh, in terms of the American maroon is that many many so called black Indian groups, they uh they have they've been here for over a thousand years. For example. Anzik man, Anzik, uh, Anzik is a baby, and this baby they did they they um, they were able to get some genetic material from this baby, and they found out that Anzik baby or An we call him Anzik man, he carried what's called the R1 haplogroup, and this is very interesting, very interesting because often they try to teach you that the R1 hap hap haplogroup represents white people but it doesn't it doesn't it represents black people and what it does is this is that many people who've had a genetic test their genetic tests show that they carry r1 do you know what this means if they carry r1 those black people 22 percent 22 percent of our foundational black americans carry the r1 haplogroup what this means is that many of those those foundational black americans who are carrying r1 they're descendants from people who lived in America 12,000 years ago. Think about that. Think wow. about that. That, 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 that. that you're connected to your ancestors who were here 12,000 years ago. But see, what happened is, is that, that, that Benjamin Franklin, he began, he began the hijack of our, of, our, of our Indian heritage. And then he started, mm. instead of them, oh, yes. Uh, wow. You know, Reverend Short can really break it down. See, see, see. The, the so-called five civil, civilized tribes, they were black. But what happened is that, and as we tried to discuss in the film, a lot of, uh, a lot of Mongoloid Indians, they came from Mexico. And uh, when they came up to Mexico, oh yeah, they lived in teepees. We didn't live in teepees. They lived in teepees because they were always traveling. And so by the time they got to the East huh. Coast, oh yes, by the time they got to the East Coast, you know, they were, they were some people hunting, you know, catching some fish and, and, and and ish like that, and so so we adopted them, and so that's why when the Europeans when they talk about when they talk about in a sense the, the original Indians they always call them copper color, and they mm. call them copper color because of the fact that who's copper color, you know what I'm saying, mm. you know, and so then but what happened is is that Benjamin Franklin, because of the fact that when the European came over it wasn't that many women, he wanted in, Benjamin Franklin decided that they should marry Indians. And so they began to marry Indians, and that's how that's how the so-called five civilized tribes later they took our heritage and they called us colored people. See, they called all they called all it, the black. Is ahead. it sort is it sort of like uh, that one book of uh, killing of the flower moon? Yeah, on the old side, it's worse than that. Yeah. Okay. Because see, because see, they not only, they not only in a sense wanted to do that is that 
in front of your face. They just told you that you're you're not you're not Uch Uchi, you're not Yamasi, you're not Cherokee, you're not you're not Cree, you're not in a sense Chata or, or, or it's 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 like no it's like Nazi Germany or yeah. apartheid South Africa. They had a thing called the comb test. And you could test out of you could you could literally be classified out of being black. You could become colored or something else. But if your hair snagged the comb, you couldn't leave being black. Yeah. Comb test. This is a real thing. And you know because he, and, that's, and, and there's nothing there's nothing scientific about that. But let's go further. To this day, the U.S. government. Uh, the Bureau of Af Indian Affairs uses a thing called blood quantum, and blood quantum isn't even a test. White people, a bunch of fat, ugly white men with pot bellies and ugly plaid jackets who play golf together, look at people, and if they see anyone that looks like you or me, that group can't be recognized as having uh, been indigenous to the United States. But if you look white, like there's a group in Montana that's not even Indian called the Little Shell Tribe, mm -hmm. they recognized as Indians and they're white, a hundred percent white. Yeah. But see, they, they it's really it's really the hijack. You gotta look at it from this perspective. Do you know today, do you know today that that it is against the law to use a genetic test to prove that you're an uh, that you're a Native American? What I yes. know, I did not know that. Yeah see they, they don't want to use a genetic test because the genetic tests are going to show that that they carry the so-called genes that are European. You gotta look at this. When you look at the night, the 1860 census, look at the 1860 census. Every time you, you you hear these Chicanos, they're talking about we have a long history. And, you know, we came up with medical, and medical, medical ruled California, medical used, ruled Arizona. But see, there were no, there were no Spanish people in California. Those were black Indians, the Ohoni. And see, what happened is, mm. is that look at, look at the 1860 census. The 1860 census shows that it was only 4,000, mm. I repeat, only 4,000 Spanish-speaking people in the United States in 1860. And yet today you see you see all these, all these so-called Chicanos, and they're talking about, oh, you know, we have the ancestry, this is our land. No, you're an immigrant. Let me explain to you what a Chicano is. When you do, when you do a genetic test of a Chicano, their genetics are going to show that they're black people. Let me explain to you why. See, the Chicanos are an invented race. How were they invented? They were invented by the fact that when the Spanish came over, the Spanish, they they raped a lot of black women and they raped a lot of a uh, lot of a uh, lot of mongoloid Indians in Mexico. And then the, the the children of these people became, in a sense, became the Chicano population. They're an invented race. You see. That's why. Oh, uh, real quick, what 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 does the word ch Chicano mean? Okay, for, Chicano. For, that's for the that's audience. What, Chicano is a word that that many American. Uh, it's uh, another way to say Mexican American. Yeah, okay. It's, an, it, it's another way of saying Mexican Americans who are not who are not who are not of Native origin. Oh, the, so it's yeah. a slur. No, it's not a slur. It's a slur. They they love it. You know they. they oh, they love it. it. <laughs> oh, they love Dang. being Chicano because he. They call Chicano oh, la Asa, la Asa, yeah, la Asa, la Asa. Yeah, yeah. And so see, but but Chicano, see, because when you go to when you go to Mexico, it's three groups. You have, in a sense, the Europeans. A lot of a lot of people in Mexico today have come from Germany and other states. And then you have the uh, the so-called Native Americans, and then you have the Chicanos. But a Chicano is an invented population. But see, the mm. Chicanos, they hate us. Do mm. you know why they hate us? Why? Have you ever seen the Omec? Head? Oh yeah, yeah, we black. Okay. When you look at that Omec head, if you put that Omec head beside a Chicano, that Chicano is gonna look what? Semi white. Yeah. Semi white, and so mm -hmm. they hate us because of the fact that we carry we carry that physiognomy of our, of our ancestors. And see, this is this is what made American Maroon such a such an informative movie because American Maroon. Is the first money first movie to do two things. Number one, it talked about our Aboriginal origins. You see, a lot of black people wanted to run away from it. When uh -huh. my mama, when my mama told me that we were Choctaw, 
I said to myself, damn, being a child cop, I was, I'm, I'm 72 years old. And, and, and in the 60s, they had a number of cowboy movies and the Indians always lost. I didn't want to be an Indian. <laughs> I didn't want to be a loser. But I didn't know my history. But I went to high school. I was at DuSable High School. That, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a high school in Chicago where Nat King Cole uh, came from and other great, a lot of great actors came. You know, it's, a, it's, it's kind of, a, it's, not as, it's not as prominent now because, see, a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, the people who run Chicago today, they have no roots in Chicago, like Mayor Lightfoot and, uh, and Rahm Emanuel and others, and, and they don't know the history of Black people anyway. So when I was at DuSable in 1968, I took a survey and found out that 65%, 65 percent of my of, of of the seniors you know recognize their their indian heritage but see nowadays a lot of you guys your parents, i don't know did your grandmothers ever mention to you guys that, that you had indian ancestry yes, yes uh my great grandma uh-huh yeah they said she's like cherokee yeah and see and see but think about that think about that now you gotta think about this grandma. guru guru think about this uh-huh they in the first the first the first American slaves were 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 Aboriginal Black people, the Pequot. And so you think about this: if you if you've got Cherokee ancestry and you got African ancestry, both of these populations were on slave plantations. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. But many of them were freed, and they were those who were freed from the plantation became colored people. So look at this. So they not they not only owe you a check. They not only owe you a check for us for us for our work on the plantation for nothing, but they owe you a check for the land they took from your great grandparents. Do you understand why they had to tell you that we all came from Africa? Yes. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because see, they want you to be looking at Africa. And while you're looking at Africa, while you're looking at Africa, where 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 yes, many of us, many of our ancestors came from Africa, but the majority of us are indigenous to the land. And they know that if you really, if you really know your history, the history that I'm work doing research on, the history that I'm talking about, then therefore, in a sense, what happens? What happens is this. What happens is this. That means they owe you for damn money. A lot of people don't know that slavery began in the north, you know, and then, in a sense, as 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 as, as Europeans began to expand into the, into Mississippi, Arkansas, Alabama, and as they expanded out of out of out of out of, in a sense, the 13 colonies, you know, uh, uh, as they expanded from, you know, places in the, in the uh, like connect New England, and, they, and as they expanded from the middle states, what they did, in a sense, is that they began to, to sell our parents and sell our children. Let me explain to you. They had a thing called the, inter, the interstate slave trade, because what happened is, is that the United States, they ended, they ended, the transatlantic slave trade. They well, they 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 ended it on paper. They still snuck people in, but the vast majority of people, the vast majority of people, black people that lived in the United States, the vast majority of people. What happened is, is that 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 they were participants after 1805 in what's called the interstate slave trade. That meant, in a sense, that 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 they would take they would take our ancestors. Let's say, let's say let's say that uh, let's say that that they had to, that but I'll use my my parents as an example. You know they were on the Venters plantation, the Venters, and so then these were these were were black people from from sub-Saharan Africa and black Indians because anytime they needed some slaves, they would just go attack attack and attack an Indian village an Indian village, and and since they were black, they just they just say hey these are these are black people too, and they just make them slaves. But what happened is this. So, so that means that that the average, the average slave, enslaved person sold during the interstate trade, interstate slave trade was five years old. Think about that. Five years old. In other words, mm -hmm. as as our as our great great grandparents produced these children, they might they might say, oh, okay, your great great grandma, great great grandma. She may have was living in living in uh, Kentucky, or she may have was living in in Maryland, or she may have was living in Connecticut. Let's let's say, let's say let's say that she had she had six or seven kids. 
But see, when 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 the white man sold those children during the interstate slave trade, he might send one to Mississippi. He might send another one to 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 Arkansas, and another one to Alabama. While while the other one was lucky enough to stay up in Maryland. Now think about this. Think about this. That means in a sense that 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 you've got so many relations, you've got so many family members that you will never know. Because of the fact by them being sold at the age of five, that meant in a sense they wouldn't really know their history. They may remember their mama's name, but it, it would be very difficult to, to, to say this because see, it's sad to say, but our griots, do you know what a griot is? Yes. Okay, well a griot, that's the name of the storytellers among the Mandingo people in West Africa. But see, <laughs> our griots, our storytellers, said to say was usually our grandmoms. And the reason that our grandmas were our storytellers, the reason that our grandmas could tell us about who we were was because of the fact that often they didn't sell the women because they wanted to get those babies. Do you hear me? So, so if you were lucky enough to be around your grandma, then you could carry on these heritages. You would know your history. You would know who you were and who you came from. And see, the beauty of, the beauty of American Maroon is just like you guys, Mention the fact that you had 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 you know Indian ancestry, see. But if you go if you go try to tell somebody I got Cherokee, they call you a lie because if they if they go hit the computer and they go look at the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma, it's gonna be a white man. That thing that we say right there, um, like how we have Indian in our family, that's like a cliche, almost cliche black American thing to say. Because it's true, a lot of us do have Native American ancestry. Because yeah. I, because I grew up in the '90s and we were saying that stuff. Yeah, you know, but but you didn't. You you said it. We said it, but we didn't really want to want to want to get get really you know buck wild with it because the white we felt the white man would reject us. And see right. that that's the beauty of, of of American Maroon. That now American Maroon is going to allow us to be able. To tell our story. Yeah, it, th th this documentary is going to like, I, I recommend giving this documentary to any person who's over the age of 65 and just someone's black in America, like watching that and it will really wake them up like, you know what, I do remember. I think it will wake a lot of like older black folks up who remember all those stories that they thought was just, you know, bull, but it was true. Right. And you know, because remember, uh, have you ever heard of uh, of uh, Gates? Professor Gates at, at Harvard University. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, see, that's how Louis Gates became famous, remember, because because he said he said that black people didn't have any African ancestry. I mean, Indian ancestry, because he said his parents had told him that he was part Indian. But then, mm -hmm. but then, even though his parents told him that he was part Indian, when he took a genetic test, he carried the R1 haplogroup. And see, mm -hmm. because he didn't do original research, he didn't know that the R1 haplogroup didn't identify him as a as as a European. It identified him as a as a, a descendant of African and Black Native Americans. You see that that's scary, man. It's very scary, and I'm gonna mm. explain to you why it's scary. There you are. Here you are, brother. You've been taught you've been taught all your life that you're the dumbest thing on the planet Earth. You've been taught all your life. You went to school, and your teachers told you you were stupid. You know. Uh, uh. You know. I like anime. I'm 72 years old. I love anime. You know, oh, 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 we we got to jump in real quick. What? So, what? What's your favorite anime then? You know, got to know. Well, my favorite, my favorite. I got two favorites right now. I like Attack on Titans. I can't, I can't wait till they finally get through with it. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, real quick. Can I pick your mind real quick on that on Attack on Titan? Okay. Real quick. Okay. So, what, what was your thought on? Because I I peeped this out when it first came out. Okay, it's society is over. It's no 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 people left. It's just a few people in this little small place. But it's only blue eyed and like blonde haired white people and one half white. Asian. Like like did you see like any symbolism within that? I, well, I, I, well, I just gotta know. Well it's always it's always it's always symbolism in, in everything. It's a thing, yes. it's a disease that I call caves. And and mm. caves caves mean mean culturally acquired immune identity deficiency syndrome. I, I talk about that in relationship to how black people want to steal whiteness. But there's many That's Japanese, it. and there's many Japanese that want to steal whiteness. Mm. They want to steal whiteness. Oh, you, are mm. not, you are not lying about that. 
sir. And, and see, because of the fact that, you know, and uh, because they want to steal whiteness, they they would prefer not. Now, just think about this. You, you know, people have to be kind of sick that that you make you have a genre, anime, a genre. And yet and yet very few, very few. Uh, uh, some of the artists now are getting a little bit more braver that they, they're making their some of the characters look a little bit more Asiatic, you know. Mm. But but in the mo for, for the most part, they 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 don't really want to give them a real Asiatic tint. Tint. That's one. That's one of the things that I like about De uh, Demon Slayer. You know, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. They kind of make the, they kind of make the main characters. They have a you know, except for the blonde guy, they kind of make them have a little Asian tint tinge. And see what happens is is that because the fact that 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 the Japanese were conquered, they were conquered by the uh, the uh, Mzungu. They were conquered by white people, and because they were conquered by Western Europeans, they have to submit to the fact that that they were they that they beat them, that they were they were better than them. And so, so then I think that they've carried that into their into their into their into the anime in the sense that they they'll say, oh, we're just doing this because of the fact that we're going to sell these to white people. And uh, and and since white people want to identify with it, then we have the character. No, no, no. You do this because you have an inferiority complex. You have a you have an an, an identity that's been stolen, and because of the fact that you want to buy whiteness, then therefore, in a sense, you went into this area. Look at look at how in, in China. This is this is kind of off the subject. Look how in China, when when the Chinese go to a beach, they'll put up umbrellas so that they won't be, become too dark. You know. Ooh! Wow! That's <laughs> why. That's why. So you, you, had wow. to, you had to understand. You had to understand that. See, the original, the original Chinese that, that that began civilization in China, they called themselves Li Men. Li means black. Men means people. So they were the black people. You see, but they were after they were conquered by the Asiatics. You know, by the Mongoloid people. The Hua Hua tribe. When they came in, in a sense, they started hating blacks. See, everybody, everybody hates black people, even though, even though you 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 don't want to admit it. You know, like in, in ancient China, after after the, after the Mongoloid people took over ancient China, every time every time they had a, a holiday, they would barbecue a, a a black person. They were almost like they were almost like like uh, like 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 southern white people when they would just hang a black person. Well, they would like to barbecue black people. See. And the thing is, this is that that's why no matter what you do, they're always they're always against you. Have you guys ever, have you guys ever played any uh, any strategy games with white yeah, people? Yeah. And, and and who always wins? <laughs> is there a reason why Hitler called the Japanese honorary Aryans? Uh, they call them honorary Aryans because the fact is this is that they they call anybody they, they you can you can't really go off honorary Aryans because. If you come from Jamaica or you come from Africa, they'll make you an honorary, they'll make you an honorary Aryan over here too, as long as you get <laughs> on the FBA, foundational yeah, black that's American. Real talk. But the thing is, this is that we're not going to go there, but you have, you have to understand is that we're a very unique people. Very unique people. Why mm -hmm. do I say that? Stevie Wonder. That's right. Stevie Wonder. Ray see, Charles. That's right. But see, we're we're very we're a very unique people. Because see, they they've always tried to tell you that you have no culture. But American culture, American culture is black culture. What are you saying, Doctor Winner? Stop that! Stop that! Stop that ish! <laughs> what I'm saying is this: is that what is their music? We made every music from country music all the way up to to, to hip hop, jazz, whatever, right? You you're right because I just saw, today I showed a white guy. Um, the founder of grunge music was Tina Bell. He was like, "Oh my God, I never knew that." I'm like, "Yeah, that was before your little fan love for uh, Kurt Cobain." Kurt Cobain, suicidal ass. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. blew his brains out? So, the music we made the music. What is the food they like to eat? Chicken, rice, you know, vegetables. They didn't eat that. You know, in, in Britain, they didn't know nothing about seasoning chicken. They thought a season a, a seasoned chicken. Was when you let that chicken decay for about two or three days. They thought it was being tenderized by hanging it outside the house. Can you understand? So we made the music, we made the food. Who do people consider to be the best speakers of English in the history of America? Name them: Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones, really? Yeah, because 
they they th they think of them as a, as a, as people who can really speak the English language well. Have you have you ever, have you ever heard James L James L Jones? You know, not when not when he's playing, uh, you know, Darth Vader, but when he's yeah. when he's playing his plays, the diction, the strength, the okay. language. There was a time, boy, when I searched for steel, and steel meant more to me than gold or jewels. The riddle of steel. Yes, you know what it is, don't you, boy? Shall I tell you? It's the least I can do. Steel isn't strong, boy. Flesh is stronger. Look around you. There, on the rocks. That beautiful girl. Come to me, my child. That is strength, boy. That is power. The strength and power of flesh. What is steel compared to the hand that wields it? Look at the strength of your body, the desire in your heart. I gave you this. Such a waste. Contemplate this on the tree of woe. Crucify him. So we can make we can make English. They said English is not our, our native language, but look how we make the words rhyme. Mm. Think about it. Think mm. about that unique character that you have. And so, see, American culture is our culture, but they had to hijack it and they had to tell you you don't have a culture because they don't have a culture. Yeah, and see, we try to tell the black nerds that all the time. While they sitting there trying to worship other cultures, black American culture is the best culture. But they it think that's the just culture. some, they just saying like that's some bull stuff. That's right. <laughs> and you know, just like my, some of that, some of that biggest, some of that biggest shows, some of that biggest uh look look at what they always have in many of their shows. You know, alchemy. Yep. And mm -hmm. where did alchemy come from? Us, the Moors. The Moors, the Moors. But they you, if you notice. They never really want to talk about the Moors. They make they make you they make you think in a sense that 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 the so-called Muslim civilization was built by the Persians and the Arabs. Yeah, and, that's and, a and lot. yes, yes. And when you read books, they always try to say Muslim instead of just saying like because you when you say Muslim, you instantly think of you know the people over there. When yeah. you're not thinking, you're not thinking dark-skinned people. Yeah. And see, and, and that and that was what was so beautiful. In terms of American maroon, is that they talked about the uh, Moors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, because you got to look at this. You know, the the geneticists they say that black and white and Asian people were separated for forty thousand years, and that and that black, white people and black people, white people and black people and white people and Asian people, they they claim the geneticists they claim in a sense that black and white people didn't meet until the slave trade. In 1492. Think about that. They tell you that all their genetic, their, their population genetic data, their discussion of where people came from, their ideas of continental origin of the various people, that, that this continental origin is based upon the fact that Black people did not meet white people until 1492. But that's a lie. Why is it a lie? That's because the Moors came from Senegal and West Africa in 711, and they began to conquer Iberia, what we call Spain and Portugal. And, the, and, the, and, these, and these Black Moors, they ruled Spain and Portugal until 1492. So then therefore, think about this. If the, jet, if the geneticists say that Black people and white people were not around each other until, until after 1492, when we know that, seven, that in 711, AD, black mm. people ruled. Black people used to rule all the way to Germany. 1751, Benjamin Franklin wrote. I think it was 1751. He wrote, he wrote that, that black people are minority people. He said that the Germans were black. He said, in a sense, 
that 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 most of the Irish were black. Mm. He said he said he said that the only the only white people were the Anglo's. Mm. Yes, he did. He did. And, and see who 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 was a, who was a who was the German the leading German action star that we all loved back in the mm. 80s and 90s. What's Swartz his name? Swartz Swartz and Niger. And what is Swartz? He's German? Yeah. I thought he was Australian. Swartz, no, Schwarzenegger came from Germany. Wow, well, that name does, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah no, <laughs> he, yes. was, he was the Swarty. Listen, <laughs> Swart, okay. Black, Niger, Nika, Black, Nika. These people have been worshiping an actor whose name, whose surname is Black Nigger, Schwarzenegger. It goes back, man. It goes back. See, I, I did a I did a uh, presentation a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking about uh, the the uh, the Vikings. <laughs> Most people don't even know that that the ancient Danes they were called Dub Dub, and you know what Dub mean? Black. When they talking about these heroic people who took over who took over Ireland, who ruled Norway, they were black. They don't teach you that in school. They teach you a lot. They give you they give you a movie like Ivanhoe. Do -do. I love that movie. This knight is no stranger. Only one Saxon could ever fight like that. This black knight's tricks bear watching. And you got the Vikings. They got red hair. They're going out kicking ass. It's a it's an old movie made in the uh, in the fifties about the Vikings. And see, they they make they they see white people have no history except a here a history of terror, terrorism. Mm -hmm. Vikings were black, man. I'll send you some pictures so you can see them. Yes, please do. Yeah, they do. They do. The, Vi the Vikings, the Vikings group, see, most of the, uh, you know, like a lot of people don't know, Foundation of Black Americans have what's called a tripartite origin. We're, our ancestors were, were chattel slaves from Ireland, the, uh, the Black Native Americans, Aboriginal Americans, and Sub Saharan Africans. Let me explain to you. The first slaves in America were Aboriginal Black people, the Pequot tribe. And so the British, the British, see, see, Black people, they're kind of stupid. What are you talking about? Okay, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Black people are kind of stupid. The white man has been able to get Black people to fight each other, to fight each other for some rum, for reefer, <laughs> uh, for crack, whatever. But anyway, what he did is that these Black Indians, he had them fight each other. And then after they would after they would fight each other, he would buy the losers and make them slaves. The first slaves in America were the Pequot Indians because they knew how to grow tobacco. You hear me? Okay, wow. this was in 1624. They always try to tell you that a lot of people were indentured servants, but most of the people were chattel. But the Pequot, the Yamasi, Pequot, Yamasi, Uchi, these black Indian tribes, they were made slaves beginning in 1624. Then, then in this, in 1659, uh, 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 the, the head of the uh, parliament in, uh, in London, his name was Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell, he was a Protestant. He hated, he hated the Catholics in Ireland and the Welsh and the, Scot and the Scottish. Well, so he went to Ireland, kicked those black people ass. Yes, yes. Ireland used to be occupied by black Irish and black Welshmen, but but the British hated them because they were Catholics. And Oliver Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell, he sent over a hundred thousand. Listen to me, I know these numbers seem mind-boggling, but he sent a hundred thousand black Irish to the thirteen colonies, and he specifically said. You will be chattel slaves. He made them chattel slaves. When the white Irish came over here, they let them be indentured servants. 
But the black Irish, those that he didn't kill off, because he killed off about two or three hundred thousand. He just murdered them. He used to just burn them up. He sent he sent over two hundred thousand black Irish, black Irish. A lot of people don't know that in Jamestown in 1619, it was already black people living in Jamestown. Many of those British people were black. But your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind, you can't fathom this. And so, so we had the Pequot Indians made chattel slaves in 1624. We have, in a sense, between 1659, I mean, between 1654 and 1659, Oliver Cromwell, he sent to the to the uh, to the 13 colonies over 100,000 black Irishmen, black Welch, black in a sense Scotsmen who were Catholics. He sent them over here as chattel slaves. See, the first Africans that came here, remember they were they were indentured servants. They didn't make sub-Saharan African slaves until 1669. So you had Aboriginal black slaves, you had black Irish slaves, then you had, in a sense, the uh, the, the African slaves. But they only they only brought a, brought a few African slaves over here because they could always attack a black Indian village whenever they needed slaves. Plus, they brought them from Africa too. See that that's why Nelly Fuller he says that we're prisoners of war. See, we didn't come over those those sub those sub-Saharan Africans. They didn't come over here voluntarily. Those black Irish, those black Welshmen, and those black Scotsmen, they didn't come over here from, from, from Ireland and Scotland voluntarily. They were captured in war. They got pictures where they were short. They, they got pictures where, where these white people are throwing the black, the black Irish children into the damn fires. You know, you got children. Just think about your, your think about your babies being thrown in the fire by these merciless people. And then we find, in a sense, that 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 Sub-Saharan Africans became became slaves. And and how did Sub-Saharan Africans become slaves? They became slaves because his brother, who was a who was from Africa, named Anderson, he wanted to make he, he wanted to keep his other brother working for him. The brother said, "My contract is over. I want my freedom." And what he did is says he went to court. He went to court, and then the judge made made his indentured servant a chattel slave a chattel slave means that you become the personal property of your owner i have a question go ahead uh, on a side like a side tangent why were the asians brought here because a lot of people say the asians they were enslaved too chinese they came over to build a railroad yeah like I, those the, i say those people were brought here because of um they did a crime in their country and it was sent over here to do the railroad no, Am I right? They just, they just, they just came. They were looking for jobs. Okay. See, but but see, who who built who built the first railroads? Oh, we did. We did that. We yeah, we, 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 built, we built <laughs> we built the railroads from the north to the south. They just remember they they built the railroads from California coming over over to the thing. But see, remember that's what. How how do you think they built those pyramids? You live in St. Louis, you guys, and and mm -hmm. and, and you know that mm -hmm. St. Louis, St. Louis used to have the largest pyramid built by black people in the world. Yeah, but you know what they did to that pyramid? What? They tore it down and they used they used the stones and they used the dirt to build a railroad. How do, how do you how do you think? <laughs> Listen to this. You ever notice that you need rocks to help build a railroad, right? Mhm. Mm have you ever wondered where they got those rocks from to build to build railroads from Chicago to Mississippi to Chicago to St. Louis? Mm. This is all you 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 and drove you and drove around Missouri. Come on now, that's mm. nothing but flatland, right? Yeah, nothing yeah. but a lot of weeds, right? Yeah, nothing but but, but trees. Mm -hmm. There wasn't no rocks there. Wasn't no rock quarries. What they did is that they tore down the pyramids our Aboriginal black ancestors built, and they tore them down. They used that stone at like a quarry, and they would go and tear the pyramids down, and they would use the stone to build up. The railroads. Do Do you know the name of the pyramid that was in um Missouri? They didn't give them no. Uh, they got it's a mound. Just mound. Up, yeah, yeah, the mound. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know it's, it's, an, uh, they, they, it's an uh, it was some pictures of it, and they show oh. how they tore it down. Oh. I, I can't think of it right now. I I, I, I know look, the area. Look, I know what you're talking about now. Just, just look, it, and the whole the whole city of St. Louis was built on that. 
built by that dirt and, and the rocks. See, see, they, 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 they taught you a lot. They, they want to, they want to make the black Indians. They, they, first of all, they say it wasn't any black Indians. What happened is this is that do you know that that the Cahokia Mound, which was in Illinois, they had a tunnel under the Mississippi River. They crossed from Illinois to into the next state across the Mississippi River. Think about the technological e e expertise that those black people had. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see you some pictures of some of the uh, some of the artifacts they found in the mounds. Please do. Yeah, because see, and they found they found stone roads that went for miles. They found they found buildings, man. They had taught us a lie. They taught you a lie. They, they, they want you to just they want you to keep thinking about you came from Africa. So that so that I love Africa. I love I love my my his my African history. But we have a history here too. Man, that's what I be trying to tell my friends. Like, look, I'm like, yeah, I want to travel and see the world, but I want to see what's going on in Iowa. <laughs> you know, I want to see what's going on in this entire country we live in. You know, you know, I met a person, I met two British people that came to St. Louis one time, and they they was like, Yeah, we're here to see Montana. I'm like, Montana? Like, yeah, it's a big open space. I'm like, oh, it's it is truly different here. A lot of people don't understand how much big and much space we have out here in this country. It, I grew up in Chicago, and I didn't even go to, to most of the places downtown because they didn't allow a nigga in it. Do you hear me, what I'm saying? When white people move to St. Louis, they can go any damn where they want to in St. Louis. But if you grew up in St. Louis, I bet your mama, when you was little, told you places you shouldn't go. I bet your mama told you, well, maybe not you, but... My mama told me I knew places I couldn't be. I couldn't be on Cicero Street and at after twelve o'clock, or white people would kill me. I, I knew I knew when I went downtown that if, if the restaurant was dark or the bar was dark, I know that I wasn't I wasn't allowed in there. Do you hear me? Same thing in St. Louis. Restaurants, you know that where you're not welcome. Let's put it like that. It's a side of town that you're not welcome. And see, that's because the fact is that. They're always so afraid, see, because they installed, they installed, our, they kidnapped our culture. They always kidnapping our music. I mean, the Japanese, the knuckle dabs, right? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Where the hell they get that from? High right. five. They, 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 they'll say that when when they when they made a mistake, they say, "My bad." Where that come from? You know what? You got a point on that. My bad. As I, I never even thought you, of that. As I told you, American culture is black culture. Because they're always they're always taking our culture, and they're always in a sense. But see, we we change so quick. The only thing the only thing the white man didn't allow us to change was hip hop. Mm. But what he did is that he he used hip hop against us. Yep. Uh, Reverend Short called hip hop a uh, dick hop because <laughs> <laughs> it's always talking about oral sex. You know these these guys don't even understand. See, if you get involved in oral sex, if you get involved in oral sex. If you don't be careful, you're going to become homosexual. Mm. Why? Because, see, a man can perform oral sex just as good as a woman. You hear me? Uh -huh. So then they promote oral sex. Why? Because oral sex is a non-reproductive sexual experience. Huh. You don't make babies with that. Okay. See, when I, when, I grew up, when I grew up, a brother was supposed to be able to get in the bed and, and make love maybe for hours, <laughs> even though we couldn't. <laughs> But we were supposed to. Mm -hmm. how, how you how you gonna how you gonna connect with your how you gonna connect with your woman, and you and you and and uh, she performing all sex on you, you performing all sex on her. Y'all not even close. Let me explain to you about the chakras. When when people in a sense talk about the chakras, they don't even understand what the chakras are. The chakras are openings in your body. When you attain when you attain an orgasm, while you and your lady having sex, what what's happening is that you're exchanging material. You're oh my God! Body. And it, and as you as you exchange as you exchange genetic material with her, and she exchanged genetic material with you, that's why after a while you two start to almost think alike. You, you two almost can answer Ooh. each other. That's because you're having sex. Oh my God, man! If she, does, if she does perform oral sex on you, and you perform oral sex on her, how are you going to develop the closeness for a man and woman to grow? You see, like like I was talking to uh, my students the other day, and I was explaining to them, and, and we were talking about we was talking about love, black love. And so I said, I said, you have to understand, it's so much fun to have sex like monkeys, but 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 the real worth of your woman, the real worth of your woman 
comes when she gets in her 50s and she gets in her 60s. Why? Because, see, the reason that you can have good sex when, when a woman is young is because of the fact every month that 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 egg is going to drop. When that egg drop, that's going to make her want to have sex. So, so she's controlled by sex, the desire to have sex, you see? And so then, therefore, in a sense, her mind, her mind is preoccupied with, with, being, with being creative, even if she don't have a baby. She still wants to have sex because that's how you get a baby. But the thing is, this is that when, when your woman gets in her 40, when gets in her late 40s, her 50s and 60s, what happened is that as her as she stopped having a period, then therefore, in a sense, she becomes more intuitive. Why does she become more intuitive? Because she's not dominated by her sex drive. Do you know? Let me tell you something. If you love your black woman and your black woman wants you to have something, your black woman will get you to have any damn thing you want on the planet Earth. Do you hear me? Because see, if your woman, if your woman wants you to have something, you're gonna get it. That's why, that's why a smart, a smart brother, <laughs> a smart brother never quits a woman. You never quit a woman. You just kind of, uh, you know, kind of disappear. Uh, you, you just don't call her that much. And you just kind of let it waste away. So you leave her confused. You want to leave her confused because you don't want to focus on that. F him up! F him up! And if you tell them you quit them, then they're going to they're gonna want to be thinking harsh of you. They're going to want to, in a sense, put curses on you. And curses can, curses can affect you because it's the intention behind the statement, you see. And so then therefore, the sense is that everything in this society is meant for you not to be able to deal with your woman and to make your woman feel that she shouldn't deal with you, see? Because see, they 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 know that 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 a good black woman is like an amulet. What are you talking about, Dr. Winners? A good black woman is like an, an amulet or a talisman. And that she's your lucky charm because see, because of the fact that she's a goddess, because of the fact that she has an, a relationship that with God that's different from our relationship from with God, she can produce wonders for her man. And how does she produce wonders for a man? Because if she speak it, if she want it for you, you're gonna get it. And if she wants you effed up too, you're gonna get it. I'm sorry. That's why I look. <laughs> That's why a lot of baby daddies, they don't never get ish. That's why a lot of baby daddies have, have messed up lives, see? Because they, they got a woman somewhere thinking negative about them. They got children somewhere thinking negative about them. I'm not saying you stay with a woman because of the fact that you had children with them. You stay with a woman because you, you develop a bond and you develop a bond by opening up those chakras Letting in that, letting in that, those genes, letting in that knowledge, letting in that experience. See, right now, right now, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you did a thing, just a punch a picture of slavery. Just go to Google and just Google slavery. When you go to the images, you're gonna mainly see see black women being beat. About ninety five percent of the pictures that you see of black people being disciplined, it's of women. Do you know why? Because they know, they know, the white men know that your secret weapon is black women. That's why, that's why, unless, unless you are an immigrant black woman, mo most FBA black women will not marry white men. Yes. But now they want, they want to try to get mm -hmm. black women to want to marry white men through the commercials and all that type of shit. You're so totally right. I watch a lot of television and you see there's no truly black couples. You don't hardly you don't hardly see a black couple because the fact is that they don't want you to have that power. See, they want to try to get that power, but the average FBA woman, foundational black American woman, she's not gonna marry a white man because she knows what the white man did to us, did to her, mm -hmm. did to her grandma. But if but if you come from the Caribbean or you come from Africa, you yep. can pretend in yourself that that you that you stolen whiteness. See, people want to get a, want to get whiteness. That's why they want to steal black thighs. Yeah, you see that a lot in the black nerd female community. How they always want to date the edge lord white boy who doesn't take baths, who's suicidal. But but look how look how many of those, look how many of those women be killed by white guys. See, yeah, yeah a brother I, every I, now and then, a brother a couple of days ago, a brother he uh, killed his girlfriend in, in Illinois. But I mean, 
Sometimes a brother can't take it when a woman quit him. Sometimes. Uh -huh. A lot of these white people, they'll kill a woman just for fun. So see, man. see, that's, see because of the fact we, that, that the white men know that, that the black woman has that type of power, you see. Look look at that guy Murdoch. He he killed his wife and he killed his children for some money. When I was when when we were younger, I would tell my wife, I said, damn, I had a dream about being a millionaire. And I said, I'm not a millionaire. You know what she told me? She said, Clyde, you are a millionaire because you got millions and millions of love from me. Damn! Damn! The power, the power of a black woman. Woo! Yeah, and that's what I that's what I always try to tell these like little nerdy black boys and just nerds in general who are on some like nihilistic hate God, hate life. Like, dude, you just need a good woman in your life. I know it sounds corny, cliche, but it's really true. But it's a lot of angry black men out there. And yes. And they're yes. angry because the fact is that you did you go to all black high school? Yes. Well, it wasn't all black. It was most majority black. I would say okay. it was like eighty percent black. Think about it, you and Benjamin. Think, think about it. Think about it. It is, it is very hard to approach some sisters. They'll put you down. I know when I was in, when I was in high school, you know, I, I, I like, I had a couple of girls that I liked, and then the boys in band they took the girl away from me. Get the hell out of here, cause they was cool, and I was considered square, even though I played on the football team. I was still considered square compared to the, the guys in band. And, you know, it is so hard. It is so hard sometimes to approach a sister. And a lot, a lot of brothers, they, they be afraid to approach, a, to approach a sister because a lot of times they put them down because they say, you're a nerd, uh, you square, all that type of stuff. But, you know, let me tell you a story. One, you know, I, when I was in high school, you know, <laughs> after, after the bad boy took my uh, girl, I asked my brother, I said, uh, I said, uh, Ed, you know, his name was Edward. They called him on 47th Street in Chicago. They called him Mr. Ed. So he was at the pool hall. He was at the pool hall. I said, teach me how to rap. And so then, so he said, number one, if you if you ever need some women to live off, find a, find a nurse, a teacher, or a beautician, because they'll always take care of you. <laughs> then he, but, then, but then he taught me, he said, is that, he said, is that you got to understand. Look at that ugly guy. He said, at your school, don't you notice that the ugliest boys have the prettiest girls? I said, you know, you're right, Ed. He said, why is that? I said, because I'm going to tell you, tell, I'm going to tell my nerd audience, listen to me, I'm going to tell you how, how it is, is that that ugly guy has the prettiest girl because he dares to take a chance to go talk to her. Woo! A lot of a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of times we don't have, we don't have a, a good girlfriend or we don't have a girlfriend, period. Because we're afraid to be put down. You got to be put down. You got to be told no sometime. But there's always a yes. It's just like in sales. It's a yes eventually. I remember I went to my first con. And I was hanging around all these white boy nerds. And they were acting like the most cliche nerds you can think of. Scared to talk to the girls. More male white nerds hanging around all the all other male white nerds. With no women around. I'm sitting there looking like this girl is dressed like Chun Li. If you're not gonna take the chance, I will. You just gotta step up to them. You know, they had a song when I was when I was growing up. That song said, "If you wanna be happy for the rest of your life, just make an ugly woman your wife." You wanna be happy for the rest of your life? Never make a pretty woman for your wife. So for my personal point of view, get an ugly girl to marry you. But for my personal point of view. Get an ugly girl to marry you. I said, hell no. I want to be a beautiful woman. <laughs> I want to be a sexy woman. Yes, sir. So I'm not going to lie. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. that. Huh? No. There's nothing wrong with that. That's right. But see, the whole point is this. You nerd guys, stop it. Stop it. No, no. What they need to stop is don't think your dream girl is a girl with green hair and cat ears. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you, you got to be realistic with the girl. You're not going to get an overly big-breasted girl who just likes sex all the time. That's not a real person. Yeah. <laughs> not, and not only that, not only that, but see, you'll get tired of having sex all the time with her. You want to see, you have to understand is that a woman, a woman wants to be talked to. A woman, not not yes. not all yes. like, like pretty words and all that, but just mm -hmm. talk to. Just, just make open. A just, right. Yep. Just being open. Hell, I was tired of those ugly boys having all the pretty girls. I wanted one too. 
Someone out there to get one. Heck yeah. I, I feel you on that. I got a question. Like, what's so like why are there so many black nerds who so anti pro black? Like every time you try to speak like actual black history, like you talk about they dismiss as hope tip crap, or they say, Oh, you too earthful centric. Why are you being so woke? Why are you being like why is that? Oh, um, that's because that's because the fact is that they 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 have what's called caves, as I said before, culturally acquired identity immune deficiency syndrome. What it is is that they they want they 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 feel that that they're only legitimized by acting as if they're white. They feel they feel that to be a natural nerd, you have to in a sense subscribe to everything that white people do. You see, and and they, and they feel that they give up their identity as a as a black person, then therefore in a sense they they feel that they're going to be accepted. See see when you when people are talking about woke culture what they're doing what they're doing is they're saying that you as a black person you don't deserve to be respected. They're saying that they're saying that you as a black person you don't deserve to have what they have. See the problem with many with many uh, with many Afro American foundation of black Americans uh, that because they suffer from caves culturally acquired identity immune deficiency syndrome because of the fact that they've lost their immunity to whiteness, once they lose their, their, their immunity to whiteness and they don't know their history, then they decide in a sense that they're gonna take on a different identity. And that identity is a white person. But see, as a white person, you cannot, you cannot ever be accepted by them. I don't know, my, my grandson, you know, my little grandson, my older grandson too, he's 26. You know, he has some white people that he hang out with and they're, they're cool, they, they get along. But he's been on so many sites where he's been called nigger, you know, where, where they call you nigger all the time. And they just always ready to, 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 to call you that. Some 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 uh, FBA people, they get so used to be calling nigger that they'll go to these sites just to have a friend online who's denigrating them by calling them names and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas, whereas you have to have a sense of identity. See, Black people don't understand. When they talk about the critical race theory, CRT, CRT. They 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 use CRT to say that that represents Black history. No, a, a professor called Derek Bell. He was a professor, a law professor, and he developed the, he developed what's called critical race theory. And what critical race theory means is this: number one, critical race theory means that white people hate you. Number two, critical race theory says that. No matter what you do, no matter what you try to do, white people are still going to try to create a race in which you're going to lose. See, racism is made up by the word race. Race is competition between two people, right? Mm -hmm. But see, under racism, under racism, the white man creates a, a, a race in which you participate, but you're going to always lose. Wait a minute, Dr. Winters, you said they hate you. You said they create a race that you're going to lose. You say they want to kill you. Then I should give up. No, you don't give up. You don't give up. Because see, even though they hate you, even though they created a race, that they're going to make it so you lose. Even though many of them want to kill you. The fact is, is that if you put your trust in God Almighty, if you put your trust in God, nothing can touch you. Nothing can hold you back. And you can still be successful. You may never be as successful as, as, as the average white person, but you can be successful enough to have a nice car, nice home, nice place to live. I got another question. So oh, what yeah. do what what do you think about people, my people? A lot of black nerds, they'll say, okay, well, I didn't grow up during that time. I don't see no no racism in front of me. I don't, I'm not being I'm not being, you know, uh shoved by police. I'm not being forced to sit at a certain count line. What do you tell like that's a lot of a lot of rebuttal to a lot of um young black nerds. Okay. They they, 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 they think they don't see racism right now. That's easy. All you gotta do is say. You're a liar. And they're going to say, why you call me a liar? You go to Reddick, don't you? Yeah, I go to Reddick. Yeah, I go to Reddick. <laughs> what do they say about your population at Reddick? Nigga, what? Come on now. See, you have, you have to make them, you have to make the average brother, even anybody that suffers from caves, you have to make them admit. Just say, how many, how, many, how many games have you played with people that you didn't know? And the minute you got on there and they, and you, and you heard, and they heard your voice, they called you a nigga. That's all you got to do. The point is this, is that they will not allow you. They will not allow you to be a human being. They're going to always, they're going to always call you a nigga wherever they, they're at. You know, mo most, most of the nerds like to go to Reddick. They like, they like to, to go to those sites. 
a lot of a lot of times a lot of brothers who go to Reddick, they don't even want to talk. They don't want to, them to hear them. They don't want to get it. And, and many discords, many discords. The minute you get in there, you know it. You be going. You be going along good. You be. You be with a bunch of guys, and they can be of different races. And many of them will, will not even will not even care about your race. But it's always somebody that's going sooner or later get in that discord that's going to call you a nigga. Am I right or wrong? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're no, right. You're not wrong. I, I don't play games, but I just listen to people. Yeah, I barely play games myself too. Okay, I got another. I got another question. Go ahead. Okay, you talk about the Moors and like the Black history throughout time. Well, what is a good movie or TV that's a good reference, like show that? Because I always tell people Robin Hood is a perfect example. I'll give. Oh, people. Robin Hood is a beautiful movie. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, because sorry. Of Robin, remember they had a Moor. Uh, the Moor teaching the white man how to use. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like a perfect example. In every version of Mo of um Robin Hood, they always have um the black man teaching the white man. Use yeah. it every time. Even the new one with Jamie Foxx. Don't you see? Don't you see? Because see, the whole point is this is that they know their history, but they have to lie about our history because they don't want you to have a role in history. Just like if you want to really learn about slavery, you got to look at emancipation. The latest movie by uh, by Will Smith, Emancipation, because okay. he because he emancipation, but he, okay. he he was he was supposed to have been from from New Orleans because he was supposed to have been from New Orleans. They wanted to try to say he was Asian, but he was the FBA. But when okay. you look at this movie, when you look at this movie, this black man, this black man in a sense, he's with his family, and and then the white man comes and say, "Nigga, we taking you off this 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 uh, plantation." And he tells his wife, I will return. This, this is an actual story about whenever they show that brother with all those webs on his back, he told his wife, I will return. That, that is the only black love story that I've ever seen in, in my life. I'm 72 years old. But that was black love because this, this, it goes on to show you all the brutality that black people experience. It showed you all when you went to a plantation that when you got to the plantation, they had, they had black people heads on on pipes yes many oh, people don't know the real plantation they show that in the movie they, yeah they show that in the movie oh they brutal on, on the real no they just showed the truth man i know i know no no I'm, I'm, that's, yeah. that's 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 i want to see that that's what i'm saying yeah so so they they show they show these black people heads and stuff see every plantation had a black person head until it rotted then they put another black person's head up there they should sometimes get a black person they get the strongest black man on the plantation, and they get four horses. They get a horse to tie tie the legs to one horse, then the other leg to another horse. Then they tie the arm to one horse, then the other arm, and they would use those horses to pull that strong black person apart. See, emancipation. Do you know why? Do you know why they don't never bring up emancipation? Do you know why Will Smith? That's the only movie they didn't talk about because he he showed slavery like it was. Hmm. What well, one that directed by Antoine Fuqua? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. And then, and then I don't. I don't want to go over all. I don't want to go in all. Then his brother and says he get, he fights in the Civil War. Do you know how many black people fought in the Civil War? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Do you do you know that that those white people they started deserting? They started leaving. The North was losing in the Civil War till we came in. 200,000. Many of them were Maroons. We kicked those white people ass. And in the movie, they have it. They have it when he had one of his first battles. And these brothers, they fight. They fight. And they win. The only movie they showed you of, of black people was with Denzel Washington. He's led by the white people. And all the Negroes die. Yaza, the Negroes die. Yes, uh. But we won most of those battles. We didn't all die. They had a policy. You know, the black, the uh, the Mongoloid and white Indians from Oklahoma. They're the ones who started the policy, not white people. It was uh it was the uh, white Indians from Oklahoma. They started the policy of never capturing, never, never capturing a black person. If, if you surrender, uh, black people couldn't surrender because if you surrender, they killed everybody in the platoon, everybody in the battalion. So you knew you had to fight because you knew you couldn't surrender. Do you know that? Do you know that that the North would have would have lost? That's, that's why the, that's why they had the Emancipation Proclamation. So they could get some soldiers to fight in the damn war and we fought damn good. We kicked ass. You know, Dr. Short, he, he's doing some research now. 
on the uh, on the black people in the Civil War. You know, he had just got this two volume book <clears throat> that lists all the two hundred thousand black men and women who served. See, ooh, jeez, you are unique people, man. You unique. And we got black folks out here worshiping every other. I uh, worshiping Jamaicans and Haitians. Ain't nothing wrong with none of that. Them, them yeah. people. It's just why y'all worshiping like living in Jamaica. We get it. You don't like America, but you can't flee from your country. This is I'll our be, country. Like, stop being afraid of standing up and saying you love this country. Yeah, we got white supremacy, but we fight it every day. And we're the only black, we're the only, we're the only people on earth that fight white supremacy. Yes. The Japanese don't fight it. Heck no. no Can I chime in for a second and just oh. say, I was at the 40th anniversary of Dr. King's assassination in Memphis, and I met a Japanese reporter from the Nikkei uh, network, and I was talking to him about race and Japanese men. You know, he's lost. And I, I, I asked him, I said, you know, why is it that you Japanese hate black people who've never done anything to you, but you love white people that have dropped two nuclear weapons on you? Would you love me if I dropped a nuclear device on you? Is that the key to your heart? And well, we didn't have further problems, but he got mad. Said, "You, you love the people that kill you, yeah. and you mad at me. You, it's weird. See, part of what's happened here. It's sort of like Cinderella. It's a, a white supremacist version of Cinderella. Even though Cinderella was the outcast, she was the the queen. She was the prize. Not her ugly stepsisters or ugly stepmom. That's sort of like the white supremacists and the honorary white people. They're not anybody that anyone wants, and they can't wear our shoes. They're very much aware of it. And we've got to understand that what is ours is ours, and it, it won't go to anybody else. As for the Japan, as for the Japanese, they and other people. In fact, I sent you that stuff, Brother Marsh, that uh, you should share about the Japanese, because everybody, you know, it's everybody's so oh, taken I'm by Japanese will. culture. Did, yeah, did you see it? Yeah, I, yeah, I said, yeah. Did you have you looked at what was said and? How uh -huh. uh, Japanese, Japanese culture is like a heavy, heavy homoerotic culture. Mm -hmm. um, the Japanese culture. So the, the thing with the, say the Japanese is a, there's a, basically I just tell you, they have a problem every year um, because the real Japanese like black people. I have a friend who was in the Navy. And when he was in Japan, this one Japanese lady loved this black man so much when she heard he was going to be sent back to the United States and discharged from the Navy and he's going to quit. She bought him a brand new Mercedes Benz and, and begged him to not go back to the United States. And there's a big problem to this day in Okinawa where the Japanese women go and they dye their skin brown and get their hair braided so they can appeal to the black uh, servicemen. In fact, there was a major um, dance contest down in the Caribbean, and the Japanese women have won. They out twerked the Caribbean women because they're used to dancing to get to black men. They out twerked the black Caribbean women and won the twerking contest. Um, so Japanese women in particular like black men and the Japanese male culture which is, um, frankly, it is um, insular and petty. And they have a big thing. Uh, I'm going to just tell you, it's called hunk chunk worship, where the Japanese run around trying to have bodies like black men for one another. It's not even for Japanese women. So uh, black men are disliked by certain people because they are the ideal. The ideal samurai, says the Japanese, is a person that has some black blood. Whoa. And it, because the Shinto religion worships the penis, since black men seem to have the biggest one, so people think I'm not into it, until the black men are the most ideal person because they have the biggest penises. I'm not saying this, but if may, you knew may, that... The, the, may, the, may, 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 may I ask, why do they worship the penis? Uh, well, it's a fertility cult, and basically bigger is better. And so okay. that means black is better. They seem to think so. And it's not just Japan. Uh, uh, certain bastions of uh, of so-called white purity like Denmark 
the people even have their their sex toys, their dildos painted black. This isn't our issue. Think about how crazy that is. People who see themselves as superior or unique, and you're running around worrying about how well we stand in our drawers. Yes. And yet, I can tell you right now, if you go to Denmark or Germany, Sweden, do you think that they're throwing away black people? Are you aware that women in Finland and Norway go down and literally buy black men in the Gambia and Senegal to have a man because their men are so punked out. Uh, you know, there was a there was a parade in Germany of women walking around naked because they couldn't get their men's attention. So what it's, are the men? What, what are the men focused on? Like each other or something? Uh, yeah, the men are focused on each other, and uh, something that Europe has in common with the Japanese is they have their population is declining, and a big part of it is that uh, the men are more into each other than they are into their women. Mm. And see, and that's what we talk about. Black nerd culture is even more sick. It is like they don't want to hang around with no women. They really think that the, the dream girl is an anime figurine or some imaginary girl. Oh, like, you know, But there's a, there's a thing that's happened, and it's in our culture. And we have uh, an anti-sapiosexual white supremacist mindset in many black women. I'm going to just go there, where black women have been weaponized against black men because back in the day, Dr. Winters is from the last generation when black women were just the top of everything. Right now, uh, black sisters uh, are in the toilet mentally. What, what, uh, what, 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 do, what do you mean by top of everything? Let me explain that black women just, you had Diane Carroll, you had Mad Sinclair, you had Leslie Uggams, whether they were with black men or white men, Black Diana Ross, I can go on and on. Uh, Kitty oh, Lester, okay. we could just we could just talk about um, God, all of these incredible black women that, uh, well, Dion Warwick, you, you had a type of black woman that was beautiful all around, a total package. The black women of the '60s and '70s, if you guys who call yourselves nerds, which wasn't a term that black people ever used to show you how we've been poisoned by these other people, black guys that knew about civil rights, that went to school, that were intellectual, were highly esteemed. Right, that's true. Uh, you, if yes. you went up to a, a sister and you started talking about France Fanon and the wretched of the earth, you start talking with that could literally get a woman's attention. They've made this ignorant culture I was talking about, it's short circuited. So that means the black guys who are at the top of their intellectual game are outcast. And they have to compete with sagging guys who have booty juice stains in their drawers. You have to compete against them. No other group of men have had the thing so rigged where the wor the trash of the men are upheld and the cream of the men are thrown in the gutter. And we don't we don't realize this is a trick that they've done. And in particular, the women who need to be protected um, don't know a good man from a bad man until they have about eight kids deep by about 50 different fathers. And then they want someone like you be because only when. So the feminism and a range of other things are eugenics and genocidal pulses that have been sent through currents in the mindset of our women. So if you went to a Harvard or a Yale or Princeton, almost every black male you meet from an elite or high ranking school, if they aren't with the white female, they've been accosted by white women from the time they're 10 years old. Mm. And, they, they, and they'll tell you that it's been harder to get with black women than it was any white men chasing black. Everybody wants a smart black male except for the rewired, confused, modern woman. I know black guys, they don't have a problem if the sister's smart or she has money, but it's very different. You're supposed to have money, but they don't like you to be smart, mm -hmm. which is 
which means that how do you get money if you don't get it from your brain? Then you're going to have to go into crime, which means it's been a celebration of criminality. They did it with Bonnie and Clyde for even whites, but there's always they're not going to punish the white bank robber like they will the uh, the black kid who gets into trouble. For example, I uh, had to embarrass someone who was white on a radio program because they made a statement. And my comment is a black man had steals a bag of potato chips will serve more time in prison than all the crooks on Wall Street that caused the economy to collapse in 2008. How the hell is that? People who cause real suffering, suicide, home loss to tens of millions of people around the world. Not one person's gone to jail. A black person can be falsely accused of something, spend decades in jail when everyone knows the person's innocent. This culture does everything it can to destroy black men in particular and it also works very hard. Going back to what I said to you about uh, what is law becomes culture. It was a almost a law for blacks not to be able to get along together prior to emancipation. Then it became the culture. Uh, Cointel Counterpro, bringing drugs into the black community, bringing LSD, promoting things. Uh, all of these hate movies, the color purple, colored girls commit consider suicide when the rainbow's not enough. I mean, remember that, uh, Dr. Winters? They began to come out with all this stuff, the black woman versus super, super macho. They just, all of this stuff is CIA indoctrination against black men. Yes, even, yes. The, e even, even these uh, black exploitation films, all of this stuff. I mean, you start thinking about what they did. Martin Luther King was a womanizer. And yet they promote Byatt Rustin, who's a pedophile serial rapist of white boys. They put him above Martin Luther King. Yeah. There's, there's a, a total effort to dethrone black men and black women by making us not get along. They talk about the Willie Lynch letter. Uh, people say that's not true. Understand the entire social welfare program to give women inducements as they deindustrialize cities and remove businesses to say the only way that that woman could have stability and an opportunity to take care of her children and a roof over her head is to turn on black men. Hate black men. Black men can't provide for you, right? If you want a good house, we'll give you WIC which is based on the Black Panther program to help women with children. We'll give you food stamps. We'll give you Medicaid. We'll give you Medicare. We'll give you Section 8, right? We'll do all of that, but we don't want you with him. Yeah. Targeted so heavily. This, to And if... and. They've hijacked everything. They've even gone to the level of promoting communism in the black community. What do I mean by that? The black church now functions very much like the party sanctioned churches in communist Europe and in Asia, where the black church now operates against the interest of black people. They've even hacked into the religion well, they'll get a mediocre person that is a buffoon who's got a private life that makes R. Kelly look like Jesus. His name is T.D. Jakes. And they make him the, the greatest black minister in the country, a person that couldn't say race at the Ku Klux Klan were driving an 18-wheeler up his rectum. Dr. Short, Dr. Winters, have y'all heard of this movie, Claudine, starring James Earl Jones? Um, it, it sort of depicts how um, a fam black family life looked like in the 1970s. I've seen Claudine, but imagine, but look at what's happening in Claudine. A black man is seen as an inferior man. When That's he true. Can't, hold on. When he can't take care of a bunch of bastards that aren't his. <laughs> yeah, look, look at that. He's brought into a situation that... And every other culture in the world, when a woman has even one child outside of wedlock, she's seen as a whore or a prostitute. Only men in the world who accept such unfavorable terms from our women, where a lady will come to you with five kids by four or five different men. 
and have made that shit work because we learned to do it in slavery. This is why you take a black man like the Passport Brothers, put them anywhere. Take a black American man and put him anywhere in the world. He's married within six months. Because, in fact, we've literally had race wars in the United States military and Vietnam and in Hawaii and in in Denmark and in Germany and other places. White soldiers literally killing black men because they could not compete. (laughs) Attention of women in other societies because, one, the black men that we're the fathers of language are very quick to learn another language especially if they can get with sisters or with ladies in another culture, they're more likely to do chores, more likely to be romantic, have nicer looking physiques, are more decent towards women are. The women prefer, and you can go online and look, there are women from Philippines asking black men to come over, come get them. You don't see that for white males. Women in Thailand, they've please come because uh, women are treated better in our culture as much as we've been vilified. This is the reason I hate feminism so much. Black American men are vilified as the worst fathers, the worst everything. And it's interesting. While being denied sufficient income, while being hounded, black men do more chores. They do more child care and do more things for the family even when they're not married, than the folks with greater income (laughs) that are married, black men, even with the system and everything rigged against them functioning, they're the most, most consistent and paying child support and everything else. These white men, they'll simply move to another country, move to another state. It's not enforced. But you know, a lot of, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the nerd, a lot of the nerd uh, brothers, they, they do. They dream of uh, moving to Thailand. They do dream of, in a sense, getting that Oriental woman because they feel that, that they don't like the feminism here. But I want to come back to the point I want to explain to you guys is that that, that I, I wrote an article years ago on the Japanese and African See, Many people don't know that, that, that there's a large number of place names in Japan that are place names found in West Africa. Do you know that the god of the, of the, god of the ancient Japanese you know what the god of the ancient Japanese name was? Amma. Amma. Amman. See, Amma. and the point, and the point is this is that the Japanese, when you look at their language, you can their language in a sense, many of the words in Japanese are, are of African Mandingo origin. You know, and I wrote this paper years ago. And see, the point is this is that what happened is, is that many black people at, at right around 2000 BC, 2000 BC. What happened there was a, a rise in what's called megalithic cultures. And these me- megalithic cultures, they began to expand from East Africa across the Pacific. You see? And that's why that's why you find that the Japanese say that you have to have a little black blood. That's why, that's why there's many Japanese words, and many place names. A place name is the, is the name of like a city or a mountain. Many of the place names in Japan are West African origin. Mm-hmm. And I also tell you how even the, even the name of their god, Amma, goes back in a sense to those Egyptians and West Africans. And so Can then- I something, Dr. Yeah. Um, Winters? I used to be vice president of the exchange student program at the academic high school. The academic high school of D.C. back in the day was uh, uh, William McKinley Technical High School. And- one of the students that's, that was from Japan in our program, her name was Mommy Oda. And Mommy Oda's Japanese. And one day, Mommy Oda was showing us pictures of her family. And Oda is a royal Japanese clan, by the way, friends. Mommy Oda's father was darker than I am. And when she showed the picture of her father... I made reference to the fact that her father, father's black. There was a little coon teacher. Her name was Shendrin Henry. She's a black Caribbean. A lot of Negroes from other countries are off code. That's okay. Trump will be president again. They won't be able to come here and bother us. Amen. Um, But Mommy Oda's father is the same color as Dr. Winner's. Now, when I mentioned her father was dark, 
she hung her head low. Mm. And she didn't say it wasn't dark, as you know. Fathers, her fathers clearly had black ancestry. She had heard it before, and it was only one picture of her father. The name Oda is one of the early Japanese royal names. She comes from a royal Japanese family, and her dad, darker than me. There are Japanese people, and, and Kyushu, the smallest of the, 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 the three major islands. There's uh, Honshu, which is the biggest island. Hokkaido is the farthest north. Well, they have Sakhalin, but the Russians own it. They've taken it. But it's Hokkaido, Honshu, Kyushu. Kyushu has people who are black colored that are Japanese. And uh, they come from, uh, there's another island, Satsuma, but they are, yeah, Satsuma. There are people who are very dark in comparison to what you've seen as Japanese. It's not discussed much, but they're there. It's the same way when I went to Korea, there were Koreans that had Afro hair. They had natural froze. It, they didn't talk about it much, but I've seen it. It's the same way I was in Ireland. And every 15 to 30 Irish people, one of them had an Afro. They, they had Moors in Ireland. And yeah. you had people that were Swahili and others, in particular, Kyushu. These are the furthest south. These are the easiest islands to get to if you're going to sail in. And so the Japanese culture, Tokyo, which is initially called Edo, that was a later place situated to be the capital of Japan. It used to be uh, Osaka, and before Osaka, it was on the southern islands. In fact, it is the southern part of Japan where the darker Japanese side that conquered the whole island system to make it into one. If you've ever taken a look at Meiji, the first major king of all of Japan who came to power in 1868, he is dark with a fat nose and fat lips. He could break dance on them. You, you don't see pictures of Meiji close up. And you'll see the same thing for China. The last non-communist leader of China's name, uh, what's his name? Uh, help me. Um, Chiang Kai-shek. Chiang Kai-shek looks exactly like my, my uncle, my mother's baby brother. Uh, fat nose. The last emperor of China, Puyi, had a nose so fat you could land a, a Harrier jet on it. Big lips, a fat nose. Just go look him up, Puyi, the last emperor of China. He was, he was a Manchu, and people need to understand the people from Mongolia are not white. A lot wow. of again darker, darker again than Dr. Winters is. They're darker than me. If you ask Asians, they'll be honest. Yeah. Um, what we're in the middle of is the greatest crime in history for a small number of people who are usurpers, the last folks to make it to civilization on any major way, deciding to revise all of history to make themselves the creators of everything. As I said in the film, um, American Maroon, these folks will tell you bowel movement is white. Every, that Because they're so insecure, and I'll point anyone, there's a book by William Shirer called The Berlin Diary. You can get yourself a copy. William Shirer, S-H-I-R-E-R, -E William Shirer. He did also kinds of books on Nazi Germany. One of the key things I'll never forget, and that book is online. It's on YouTube. You can listen to it for free, even if you're broke. There's a certain point where Adolf Hitler, with a group of folks, is making fun of Heinrich Himmler, the founder of the SS, the people who killed all the Jews and the other people in Europe and in, and, and, and Russia and all over, that Hitler was making fun of Heinrich Himmler, who stupidly believed that there was some ancient white Aryan civilization that was the source of everything. And even Hitler, who was not a dummy, 
would make fun of and laugh and joke about how stupid Himmler was trying to find an ancient white civilization that never existed. And it was an inside joke that this man was a fraud. So Adolf Hitler, supposedly the father of white supremacy and white hate, didn't think that the Germans had any ancient greatness. And by the way, Hitler's not alone. They all know it's a lie. And so let's just bring it forward. You know, Dr. Winters and I always talk about ancestry, and I'm more than willing to say to you, within the last month, I submitted twice unsuccessfully to 23 and Me uh, DNA test because I wanted to learn more about, you know, roots. And I have it in documentation, and I can take a picture of my bank statements that 23andMe has told me that they will not do further tests on me. And they refunded me, but they'll never refund me again if I submit for a DNA test. And they said they could not find my DNA after two efforts, and they would not try a third time. I could do it if I wanted to, but they simply would take my money and not refund me. And I want to say to you, it's crazy. How could you not find my DNA? I put enough spit in there, more spit than what you'd see in a porno. Where? How could you? How could you not find my DNA? Two times. And by the way, when you get asked to do a refund or told to do a refund for Twenty Three and Me, you're supposed to write something, tell them why, and submit a kit number. I couldn't find my kit number. I asked to speak to someone. They didn't even get back to me. They just gave me, they not only gave me the money for my kit, they gave me the money for my postage. I'm supposed to fund you for the kit. They gave me everything. They just go away, nigger. And I'm thinking, what? What did I do? Why are they angry with me? They just shut my page down and everything. What what am I, what did I do? What well, you did, what you did is this is that they know once they did your once once they did your DNA. And they started showing all these people who you had connections with. They didn't want that to get out. They didn't want that to get out. They remember 23 and remember what they do is that they connect you with other people that 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 carry the same genetic, the same genome throughout this country. And they didn't want they didn't want you to know your connections. And that is dangerous. They don't want you to know the truth. Yeah, so what they, what they don't know, and this is sort of where we need to begin to understand that there's a big lie going on here. The biggest lie, I was just downtown. The next time I go downtown, I'm going to go to the National Gallery of Art and take a picture of a major painting on the second floor of the natural, National Portrait Gallery. Uh, there's a picture, a painting of George Washington's family. And um, on the same picture is a person clearly black who the artist painted to look just like George Washington. And they smeared the paint on the face of the person. But if you look, you can see the lines that that person literally drew a face identical to George Washington on the body of this black person in the George Washington family. But that artist understood he better not show people that George Washington either has a brother or a son that's clearly black. And the families are named Syfax and Quander. Uh, I grew up with them. I grew up with people who look like George Washington. In fact, the school that I went to was in a place called, you've heard of it, Mount Vernon. I grew up in Mount Vernon, Virginia. And the teachers at school took pains to always teach us that George Washington was sterile and that George Washington had no children. That may sound okay to you guys, but Mr. Winters is older than me. Have you ever heard of teachers talking about sex? Old school no, teachers? Not in my school. They do it no, today, though. But. No, they do it today, but do you think that when they're doing this in 1964, 
1965, 1969. I started school in 1968. Why are they teaching us George Washington sterile in 1968, Dr. Winters? I'm three years old. Why? And I'll tell you, the neighborhood next to where I lived is called Gum Springs. It's been slowly swallowed up by development, but Gum Springs was a neighborhood that was based, built on land that was given to George Washington's son. Are you understanding me, people? Yes. And what, what I'm saying is that when they talk about the founding fathers and all this other stuff, a lot of the people who are the descendants of the founding fathers all look like us. I would go even further to say to you, right here in the D.C. area, there's a family with the name Bonaparte. Yes, Napoleon Bonaparte's descendants are Black people who live in the D.C. area. Meaning the last royal house of France. <laughs> is among black folks who may be driving a bus or living in public housing. If you don't think that people don't know these kinds of things, or a gentleman who's like a third cousin of mine, reaching out to tell me, hey, by the way, did you know you were related to George Washington? And did you know that you were related to Abraham Lincoln? Did you know you were related to Thomas Jefferson? Did you know that you're related to Robert E. Lee? <laughs> Did you know you're related to Stonewall Jackson? Um, and then another cousin, White, calls and says, Did you know that you're related to Governor Gavin Newsom of California? Now, do you know, my friends, this is why even now they're looking at coronating Prince Charles as King Charles. And the big problem is Meghan Markle. The problem is, is that Meghan Markle has Moorish blood <laughs> and descent, and she's royalty. And that she's more royal than they are. And Meghan Markle's family is from Henrico County, Virginia, <laughs> as are many Black Americans and descendants of the first people that were brought into Virginia. And, and other words, and they're even doing research over in England and other places looking for the British royal lineage. And they know it's here. And some of the people don't look like the folks in the palaces. And you have to understand the people in the palaces now are German. And they're not even high-grade Germans. Right. But and even so more... Even even more than that is that 97, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas Cromwell, he destroyed 97% of the royal art in England, Wales, and Scotland. He sought out every picture of a black person, black royal, and he destroyed it and had them repaint it, had them repaint it as if they were white. Can you imagine that? 97%. He went into monasteries. He went into the, the rich homes. Anything that had a black face, he took it and threw it away. That's why today they only got about 5% of the actual art, the actual photograph, the actual, you know, paintings and statues of and, black, of the real royalty of Britain. And Dr. Wonders, remember I sent you that archaeological find that they found and uh, they're having to reconsider who the original Europeans were. And they had a picture of this person. The European people showed the original inhabitants of Europe. And you saw that. I know I sent it to you. Yeah. And the persons were represented clear up black people. I wrote, was, I wrote, remember, I wrote a book on that. You got it in your library. <laughs> yes. The Grimaldi people and others, even the Laplanders, and if you notice, a lot of people from Finland, Norway, Denmark, the so-called so pure white Nordic people, they have better looking noses and lips than a lot of English and other people have. That's you, because the Danes, that's because the Danes were black. The Danes were not white. The Danes yeah. were black and they're descendants of the Moors that used to rule up there. See, that's why in a sense the, the Vikings, You've been told a lie. They teach you that the Vikings were white. 
Vikings were blacks. They were the, the original Danes. That's why they called them Dub over in uh, over in Ireland. And see what yeah, happens. And the Dub Dub means black. And there's another word. Um, if you ever watched, uh, 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 what's that thing? Uh, Dallas. Yeah, the movie. The show's called Dallas. Mm -hmm. And the guy's name was Patrick Duffy. A lot of people don't know that Duffy means black. Right. And 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 what's even more is if you notice, if people would really look at look at the blondes, the blondes in the 1950s and early 60s had wide noses and big lips. <laughs> and Marilyn Monroe had to get her nose made smaller. <laughs> yeah. And she had to be made more Caucasoid looking. Yeah. She had the body, but she didn't have the face. And it's not just her. I mean, look, I, I've done different things. I remember a couple years ago, I think the last time I was allowed on InfoWars, I made a comment. I challenged David Dukes, supposedly the most famous Klansman in the country. I said that David Dukes was a fraud for stealing white people's money because he's black like me. And white people needed real white leadership, but David Dukes couldn't provide it. And if David, David Dukes needed to give these white people their money back, tell them I'm a mulatto and I know one when I see one. Uh -oh. <laughs> I said to, to David Dukes. He needs to take a DNA test. If he wants me, he needs to prove to me and everybody else that he's really white. And, and, this, and stop lying to white folks about being white. Do you know David Dukes has had a chemical peel? He's had nose jobs. He's had as much facial surgery as Michael Jackson uh -huh. to make himself look white. If you get an old picture of David Dukes, in fact, when I was at my cousin's uh, aunt's, I mean, grandmother's funeral, I saw a couple of kids and her family from down in Virginia that looked like David Dukes. David Dukes comes from Louisiana. The states of Louisiana and South Carolina in particular are notorious because up to one in five or one in four whites have a high amount of, of, of definite African ancestry or black ancestry right. david dukes when you look at him and you see how big his nose is there was a puerto rican uh comedian named freddie prince david dukes and freddie prince could be twins david dukes has dyed his hair he's done all of that and in fact you know david dukes's first wife left him because she couldn't stand him looking at black porn all day Oh. Mm. Huh? He getting paid to hate black folks in the day to spend money looking at black sex all night. These contradictions you'll see and a whole bunch of people doing all kinds of racist stuff. To, it's basically, as Shakespeare says, says the lady doth protects, protest too much. Some of the most bigoted people you'll see are people who know goodness well, they're not what they sort of look like. And so they overact on racial hatred to, to shield the fact that they are not what you think they are. David Dukes is a mulatto, and I challenged him on a pro-white station. And I, I didn't get any threats. I got crickets. And it's not just me. The white supremacist groups have had a real problem. They're the most anti-DNA testing organizations in the country because they're losing members. They're having members who thought they were white that wanted to have a racial war with black people only to find out that they're not white and say, can I still be a Klansman? My DNA is like 30% black. I didn't know. And so they're being told Forget about what that says. The, those are bogus. We need the members. Yeah. So even your white supremacist organizations. In fact, one of the greatest so-called white supremacists was a mulatto named Fritz Kuhn, the founder of the American Nazi Party. They couldn't even get a real Aryan, whatever that is, to form a hate group. And it goes on and on. And I assure you, if you ever look at 
some of the most vocal anti-black spokespersons in the country. They're never blonde hair, blue eyes, blue eyed. I had an experience many years ago of meeting one of the grand dragons of the Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan named Michael Burden. And when I got down there, I almost had to fight with the Klansmen. It wasn't over him hating black people. When I saw him, I exploded. <laughs> I cursed him out because it says you're a mulatto. Damn it. I came all the way down here to see a high yellow black person. I told him, you're a Cherokee black mix. What the hell is this? This is a fraud. You need to pay me my gas money back. <laughs> I said, I thought that's going to be the blonde hair, blue eyed, white guy, Germanic, about 6'2. I mean, short with dark hair. And I said, Look at your eyes. You got an eye fold. You, you're a damn Indian. <laughs> my God, you're a Yamasi. You're not even a white person. Man, I threw a tantrum in there. He had to put his head down. He had to put his head down. He's not really white. What the hell is all of this? I thought that's going to be the Klansman. I told him I have relatives lighter than you. <laughs> By the way, he quit the Klan. Um, but it's like, damn. You were all that way to see a black, self hating black man win the Klan. I told him I could go to Howard University. <laughs> Yuki, well, what's your what's your final question? How as black nerds can empower ourselves against white supremacy and be more than just black nerds? The way the way that you can empower yourself is to that that nerds have to nerds have to learn a true understanding of their history. When they learn when they learn and understand the history that we've talked about, you know, Dr. Short has brought the fact that 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 the Japanese were that the Japanese ancestors were black. I tell you how that God was black. That language is black. Therefore, in a sense, that, that when you understand who you are and what you are, instead of talking about people who are hoteppers, you know, we're talking about, in a sense, actual history. The, the, the evidence that, that Dr. Short has talked about in terms of, uh, of, the, of the Black people who were Indians and, and the Black people who, in a sense, were Europeans, this, this stuff has to be known. And then, and then that nerd person will understand, in a sense, that you do have a legitimate history. But most important is that that the nerd, the the foundational Black American nerd, has to realize he has to learn that he's from a unique, a unique population. He's a unique person. His history, his culture. See, once they start to understand, and you start to get them to see, look at the American culture. Ask them, ask them, what makes American culture culture? And they'll see it's black. When they begin, in a sense, to see that 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 the culture is black. That, that, that everything is blackness, then therefore, in a sense, they'll get that self-esteem and they'll begin, in a sense, to love themselves and they'll regain their black identity and stop trying, in a sense, to buy whiteness by creating a false sense of being white or semi-white. All right, thank you. My last question is for Dr. Short. Why does Hollywood always choose um, black women to denigrate black men within their things they make. They'll make a showrunner like a Ava du DuVernay, a Courtney Kemp, Shonda Rhimes, or they even choose black men like a Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels. They'll, they'll choose those people. Well, why do they choose these black people to denigrate us so hard? And, mm -hmm. why, and why are they always democratic leaning? I would say this. Hollywood is dominated by, by what I would call um, Eurasian conversos. Okay, these are people who are converts to Judaism who are not Hebrews. So basically, if the foundation of your culture and everything is a forgery, then everything that you do is a forgery. You know, uh, uh, truth can't come from a lie. Purity can't come from something that's corrupt. And in fact, anything that is pure or decent will be an abomination to anything that is corrupt and indecent. So you have to ask yourself, what is it about us that elicits such scorn and contempt from this group of people who claim a heritage in Africa that is not theirs? They may have the faith, 
but they don't have the lineage. It's sort of like a stepchild uh, or a, 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 or foster kid who is taken into a family and has an issue about not being in the will. Well, you're not supposed to be in the will if you're not actually in the family, unless you've been brought in, right? So one of the fundamental basis of racism in the world today is a white Christ, a white Semites, a white Israel, white Hebrews, an ancient world that's white, a white Rome, a white Greece. Who's pushing this? And what do people have to hide? Why, why, why has some, some people had to lie about all of human history, murder millions of people and do all of this to try to get somewhere? Hmm? What, what is driving that and who? And you don't have to believe me. I, and I'm not attacking. I'm not saying anyone's not in a faith that they say they are. But I am saying I don't claim to be. How can I say? I don't claim to be Chinese. I, I, it's just not. I don't have that kind of connection that I'm aware of. And even if I claim to be. Um, and I could learn the language and everything. And so I could become a co-associate or a co-associative, which is a, a co-associate is sort of like a, a relationship where a person comes into a community and becomes a part of it through their willingness to have the covenant and obey the rules and act as a member of the group. However, you do not see these people doing that. So, and this is a long way of saying it, so I'll just go lance it in the boil. There are people who are not descendants of Abraham or Isaac or Jacob in the sense that other people are. And they are the people in Hollywood. And they know their actual history. And apparently they seem to know who are the actual descendants of the people who are the founders of the civilization of the world, and it is not them. And apparently it must be us because they're doing so much to hurt us and we have no history of ever doing anything to them. Hmm? And if you want to destroy something, you assassinate the character first, that gives you justification to assassinate the person physically by assassinating their characters. So there is a massive move to engage in cultural genocide. And it's the same way that we talk about ethnic cleansing and erasures. Someone wishes to erase us for whatever reason, but the strongest strain of this erasure when it comes to Hollywood, there's just no way around it. These are people from Eurasia who are claiming to be Hebrews and they are not Hebrews. They said that they weren't con converts to the religion of the Hebrews, but they are not by blood. And they apparently seem to know who is. And therefore, can you imagine if you were a baby and you grew up in poverty and misery in some place in the world, and then someone explained to you that your family was very rich and that you had houses, land, and gold and everything, and someone else had what your grandparents had planned for you. Do you realize that those people who stole all that knew that you existed? They could never be at peace with what they had done, because if they know how great you were and what you came from greatness, that you may actually one day want what was yours. Therefore, they're doing everything in a defensive way <laughs> and an offensive way to prevent them having to give or let go of what they've taken. And that is not just true for the people from Eurasia. 
It's also true for the people who call themselves white. This isn't their land. This land is your land. This land is my land. Bullshit. This land is my land. This is land you invaded and stole. So <laughs> we're the original proprietors and someone has a real problem. Think about it. When a person steals or takes something or commits a great crime, it doesn't make them a nice person. It makes them insecure. And I want to segue to just saying to you that what other types of people sit up thinking about exterminating and eliminating whole groups of people who aren't even fighting them, who don't even have an interest to be in conflict with them? What makes people do this? Other than there is a great evil and a awareness that uh, retribution and vengeance will fall on them if they don't keep doubling down on the original crime that they've committed. And so Hollywood is just a more visible manifestation of the crime. We could get into credit. We can get into access to capital. We can get into access to health care. We can get into genetically modified food. We can get into fluoride in the water and chemtrails. We can get into what's being put in uh, hair and beauty products to sterilize people. We can get into bioweapons like the Ebola or this uh, genocide jab that was supposed to decimate Africa, and it failed, as did the AIDS uh, experiment. Who's doing all of this? And who are they targeting? And why are they targeting them? Who's into organ harvesting? Who's stealing blood? Who's doing melanin experiments? Who's doing all of this? And why? <laughs> Who comes from resource poor land? Who's made very limited contributions to human civilization? Who's notorious for constant warfare? Who? Once, once you <laughs> look at and who's been the biggest victims of all of this over the last, say, 500 years? And if you knew you had committed all of this to someone and you understand what goes around comes around, then you have to consistently do as Thomas Jefferson said. You have to keep holding the wolf by the ears. In a wonderful book that was never meant to be published, called the uh, Notes on the State of Virginia by Thomas Jefferson, he made a comment that whites had done so much wrong to black people. Either we would kill them off or they'd have to exterminate us because of what they'd done. Thomas Jefferson wrote this in the 1790s. He didn't say that white people were innocent or didn't know. He said white people were guilty and had done just such horrific things to black people that basically they deserved it. He thought so. So do you realize that lots of people think so? And that's why a black person using the same restroom or getting a hamburger seems to be an existential threat to a whole bunch of your stupid incel white colleagues. You going on a date with a woman of another race is a threat to them when they've been raping our women for hundreds of years. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? It's because when you're in the wrong, when you're morally evil and your system is debased, bankrupt, and worthy of uh, being extirpated, you don't stop doing evil. Hitler didn't stop having the trains go to the concentration camps and the death camps because the Russians and the Allies were advancing. They stepped up on hurting people. Evil has no natural enemies unless goodness steps in and counters it. I hope I've answered your question. Where can they find you? You can find me on my website, yukiethestorman.com. You can find me on Facebook, Facebook.com slash yuki. You can the snowman on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. You can find me, Yuki the Snowman 314. And you can hit up my cash up. My cash up is dollar sign Benjamin A. Snow. You wanna find me? I'm on YouTube at Dark Dreams, Bright Ideas. I'm on Twitter at SuperLostFan108. I'm on Instagram at, at the TV Guru 108. You can find my cash up down in the description below. We see you guys and gals in the next one. Later.